So this is sort of a follow on to the previous video in a roundabout way. I just want to go over at least briefly, what is an alpha or a beta test? This might sound like something that explains itself or could be discovered in a Google search in under five minutes, but it seems to be something that comes up occasionally when I talk about how games feel in different stages of development. For example, if I've said this feels more like an alpha than a beta, people act as if I've somehow just pissed in their cornflakes. I think the reason why this is coming up more and more is because not only are bigger game devs using beta as a marketing thing in the last decade increasingly, but they also use the phrase beta even if it isn't really a beta by definition. It's like they just assume gamers are too stupid to know the term alpha, so just use beta because those are more common. But early access on Steam also doesn't help as it muddies the water even more with games that can range anywhere from early alpha all the way through to finished. But anyway, let's start with alpha testing and what that means for games. I will also include links to articles I used as reference in the description so people know I'm not just making up my own definition. Alpha testing is the first end-to-end -end type of testing that you will see for games, also referred to as acceptance testing in terms of software. Usually, an alpha means that it is possible to finish or play a game properly, but it will not be polished and there will be bugs, and potentially it will be missing animations, missing sound effects, missing UI, or even missing an unfinished textures, for example. It doesn't have to be that bare bones, but that is potentially what you'll be working with if you apply for an alpha. The main point of an alpha test is to iron out the gameplay and test for major bugs that either break the game, cause crashes, as well as gain feedback on the game at the alpha stage. For indie developers, alphas can also be really useful for testing the performance of a game, as usually they don't have the budget to have a massive variety of hardware to test. Depending on the length of the alpha, they might try to optimise during the test, or if it's only a short period of testing, afterwards. So an alpha is in short, a window of testing where users can try a product in its early stage of development. It's unfinished, but playable. It may even have missing or unfinished parts, like textures or UI. Alphas are done to iron out gameplay, gather feedback, and fix issues that arise quickly. These are also good for indie devs to gather optimization information from a vast amount of hardware combinations. Alphas are the first look at a game or software that allows people to try the bare minimum before developers work on the rest of the game and polish it for beta or release. Now for beta testing. This is the more widely known type of testing for gamers, but what does it actually involve? Beta testing comes after alpha testing, and means most major bugs and issues got squashed. On top of this, in beta, the mechanics and overall look and feel of the game should be borderline finished. It won't be perfect, but it's a much higher quality product at this point than alpha. It should look and play like it's 99.9% .9 done. In a beta, you're basically welcome to try and break the game in any way possible, as well as find issues that QA or alpha testing have not found yet. For example, in MMOs, that could be duplication exploits that allow people to duplicate expensive or rare items. In an FPS, it could be a way to break the game and reload nearly instantly, like animation cancelling, which is where you try and find a way to cancel the reload mid-animation but still retain the benefit of reloading. These are rather rare things to uncover, but are a big deal to developers, as they will want to fix these before a game releases, rather than after, and potentially get bad press for it. They may also want to conduct a stress test during the beta phase, which is where you want to see if the servers and or game client can handle being online for hours under heavy load. For online games, this is a critical thing purely because they want to make sure that on launch the servers don't get flooded and crash. That could potentially last hours or days to fix, depending on what breaks or what went wrong. So a stress test allows for more optimization for clients and servers, either during or after the test. And for most games, a beta test is most likely the final step before release. They take the feedback and issues raised during this time, and take them away to be fixed and worked on before they hit the big red button. Though as I said before, some studios and publishers have been using them more as a marketing tool, including beta access for pre-order of their game, which I would say you should never do, as it's a shady practice and leads to subpar games as people buy to play, rather than play to test. Beta testing in short is, 
a final test before the release of the game. It should be 99.9% .9 finished, but a few bugs or issues aren't abnormal. It's the final attempt to break the game and all the servers for fixes pre-launch day. That's a pretty simple way to view both alphas and betas. There are subcategories of alphas and betas, but as most game devs don't specify, or do them as much, I'd rather just keep it black and white for this video. If you were confused or unsure what the differences were between alphas and betas, I hope this helps. If you have any further questions or comments, you can slap those in the comments section, which is handy. All socials will be in the pinned comment and the description, and with that I will see you for the next video.